Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Liopleurodon The Liopleurodon may have been one of the fastest swimmers of the late Jurassic period about 160 million years ago. This thing was a carnivorous reptile that lived in a vastly prehistoric sea, which covered most of the European continent. Although the Liopleurodon did live alongside dinosaurs, it wasn't technically a dinosaur. It was a marine reptile known as a plesiosaur, one that only lived around France, Germany, and England. There were a lot of plesiosaurs in the ancient world since they lived for over 100 million years and evolved in a lot of different ways. But the Liopleurodon was truly special in its ferocity and its magnificent size. Even though only a handful of fossils have been found, researchers are confident they know how big the monster was. It likely grew to at least 33 feet, weighing upwards of 3,700 pounds. The Liopleurodon had a massive head, allowing it to swallow most prey without it ever touching its teeth. It also had strong flippers it used to propel itself through the water with incredible speed. Paleontologists also believe the creature had a great sense of smell. This is all based on the arrangement of the nostrils, which suggests it could have smelled prey from far away, just like modern sharks. Sharks can smell their victims even when they can't see them, and it's believed the Liopleurodon could too. Number 9. Mesophile There was a prehistoric spider so huge and so ruthless that if it were alive today, it would be hunting cats instead of fruit flies. The Mesophile was about the size of a human head, a purely carnivorous arachnid that lived during the late Carboniferous period, about 350 million years ago. It had fangs, it was covered in black, scratchy skin, and it may have had some tinges of red. It was like a tarantula except a lot bigger, far more frightening, and thankfully extinct. But it wasn't like normal spiders. The Mesothele lived in the land before time, long before dinosaurs, when the world was covered in vast forests of ferns and blossoming plant life. The Mesothele was unable to make webs out of silk, and so it lived inside underground burrows like a rat. And although it couldn't create a web, it could still produce silk. It used its silk to make traps, trip lines that would vibrate when a potential victim walked near its nest. The eight-legged freak would then burst out of its den, ambush its victim, and drag whatever poor animal it had just captured back into its burrow. The Mesothele was also something of a loner. Scientists don't think they had any kind of social life whatsoever. They didn't share their homes and likely only mated as a kind of necessity instigated by nature. This bad attitude extended into Mesothele's hunting life. When they weren't sitting around their burrows waiting to ambush something, they were actively raiding nests of lizards and other small reptiles. A single spider would roam into a nest and kill everything inside, dragging its victims down into its hole in the ground. And now for number 8, but first, it's shout-out time! I wanted to say a big thank you to Samuel Lopez and Jessica Kovacs for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing prehistoric creatures. Number 8. Mamenchisaurus Sauropod dinosaurs are famous for their long necks. You're most familiar with the Brontosaurus, probably, a legendary sauropod with a ridiculously long neck and huge feet. But there is another sauropod that took having a long neck to preposterous levels. The Mamenchisaurus was a prehistoric behemoth with 19 vertebrae, making its neck just as long as its body and tail together. Its neck was ridiculously long, a full third of its body. Its total length was over 100 feet, meaning its neck was at least 35 feet long. When compared to an average person, the Mamenchisaurus was an unbelievable titan. A person would barely stand taller than its big toe, while its massive neck rose way above the trees. Sure, there were carnivorous dinosaurs, obviously far more frightening than this long-necked herbivore. However, there is no denying the power of such an enormous monster. Scientists believe its neck was so long that it could spend all day grazing without having to go anywhere. Moving must have been a significant chore, and so the dinosaur wanted to use as little energy as possible. It simply swung its neck from tree to tree, munching leaves. But if some smaller, unfortunate animal wound up under its feet when it did decide to move, there was no escape 
from being crushed. Number 7. Godzilla Shark In 2013, scientists discovered a prehistoric species of monster shark. And just recently, they were able to give this marine monster a name. They now call it the Godzilla Shark, a relative of modern sharks that lived 300 million years ago. Paleontologists found the shockingly preserved skeleton of the ancient shark at a site near Albuquerque in New Mexico. The shark was huge, growing almost 7 feet long. It had 12 rows of sharp teeth, powerful jaws, and huge fins on its back. Long before dinosaurs ruled the Earth, this was the apex marine predator. Scientists nicknamed it the Godzilla shark because they haven't found anything else remotely as large in the region. According to the man who gave it that nickname, John Paul Hodnett, the shark was also bizarre in that it had reptilian-like spines on its back. It may have looked like a kind of hybrid between a crocodile and a shark. The official name of the prehistoric predator is Hoffman's dragon shark. Scientists say it's extremely rare to find any kind of skeletal material from an ancient shark. Finding the complete skeleton was a once-in-a-lifetime discovery. The fact that the shark had reptilian characteristics makes it even more amazing. It really makes you wonder what other kinds of scary monsters lurked in the darkest and deepest parts of the ocean, especially during the Devonian period, when the world was ruled by aquatic horrors. What nickname would you give this shark if you found it? Number 6. Dracorex The Dracorex Hogwartsia sounds like a make-believe creature that you'd find in the world of Harry Potter. In reality, this dinosaur was a very real animal. It was given such a fairy tale name because it looked a lot like a dragon you might find in a storybook. The Dracorex had a head covered in spikes and knobs, it wandered around on two legs, and it ate nothing but plants. The Dracorex, although it looked like a mystical dragon that could breathe fire and emit waves of lightning, was an herbivore. It belonged to a larger family known as Pachycephalosaurs, dinosaurs characterized by having dome-shaped skulls. It lived in North America and Asia starting around 95 million years ago. They only went extinct when the asteroid came down from space and wiped out the rest of the dinosaurs. The dinosaur's long and complicated scientific name was indeed inspired by the Hogwarts School for Witchcraft and Wizardry. Its name means Dragon King of Hogwarts. Even J.K. Rowling publicly announced what an honor it was to have a newly discovered dinosaur's name inspired by her books. The dinosaur itself was found during a fossil collecting trip by Steve and Pat Salisbury in South Dakota. Number 5. Afrovenator the skeletal remains of the Afro-Venator were found in 1993 in the African nation of Niger. Its name translates to African Hunter. This ferocious carnivore lived somewhere between 167 and 157 million years ago in the Jurassic Age. But ever since it was discovered 30 years ago, no other skeletal remains of this theropod dinosaur have been found. We only have one skeleton making scientists wonder just how widespread these creatures were. Even though there is only one skeleton, scientists have been able to extract a lot of information from it. They know the dinosaur was an estimated 26 feet from its tail to its snout. It also weighed about a ton. But unlike other carnivorous monsters, looking at you, T-Rex, the Afro-Venator had unusually long arms. It was slender, light on its feet, and likely had an incredible sprinting speed. It was faster than the Allosaurus, able to maneuver its way through the prehistoric forests of West Africa. But speed likely meant less power. In a fight between the Afro-Venator and the T-Rex, the T-Rex's biting power would undoubtedly win the battle. But if push came to shove, the Afro-Venator could easily run away on its long, gangly legs. Number 4. Majungasaurus the Majungasaurus did not have long and slender limbs like the Afro-Venator. Like our friend the T-Rex, it had underdeveloped forearms. Its arms were puny, with its fingers fused together and essentially useless. It wouldn't have been able to use its arms for anything, especially not gripping. Scientists have guessed the arms could have been used in some kind of mating ritual, but it's extremely doubtful. What the Majungasaurus lacked in its arms it made up for in its powerful legs. It had incredibly strong leg muscles, 
allowing it to move quickly and prey on larger, slower dinosaurs. This thing was a monstrosity, a dinosaur about 21 feet long that had a tendency to bite off more than it could chew. The meat-eating Majungasaurus lived in Madagascar about 70 million years ago. By far, the strangest aspect of the dinosaur was that it had a horn on its head. Imagine a ferocious T-Rex mixed with a rhinoceros. It had a huge spike protruding from the top of its skull just above its eyes. But scientists are stumped over what it used the spike for. It was made of a porous material, meaning it most likely would have broken if used in combat. It could have been used in mating rituals, but again, scientists are only guessing. It's a total anomaly and something very unique for a theropod carnivore. Number 3. Rugops Rugops means wrinkle face. It's not very flattering at all, but 95 million years ago when the Rugops dominated West Africa, it probably didn't care too much about being pretty. This thing was a monstrous predator that ate anything it wanted. Its skull was found in Niger in 2000, making it one of the very few carnivorous theropods found in the region. But let's get back to the bizarre name. Why was such a fierce creature given the name Wrinkle Face? It's because researchers found impressions in its skull bone from huge blood vessels that ran underneath its face. These left a kind of wrinkled impression, inspiring the name. They think the blood vessels in the dinosaur's face were necessary to supply a constant flow of rich blood. The only explanation is that the blood was needed for the dinosaur's snout to give it a vivid color display or the blood was needed because the Rugops had some type of armor covering its entire head. The Rugops is a total mystery. It might have had a colorful nose, it might have had a bone helmet, and it might have also been a scavenger. Researchers believe it had an exceptionally weak bite, and its skull was also not very strong. In fact, everything about it was weak, even its teeth. This suggests the Rugops lived more of a scavenging lifestyle than a hunting one. All that blood going to its face may have been used to put on a color display, frightening more powerful dinosaurs away from any fresh kills the Rugops scavenged. Number 2. The American Lion Thousands of years ago, there were huge and terrifying lions roaming across North America. The world was infested with big cats, wandering all across the globe and dominating the food chain. There were saber-toothed cats, monstrous cave lions in Europe, and there was the American lion as well. Just about every corner of the world had its own fierce felines. The earliest remains of an American lion date back to about 200,000 years ago. They are closely related to modern lions, but likely diverged down their own evolutionary path about 500,000 years ago. What's truly amazing is that humans lived alongside these animals up until their extinction 11,000 years ago. Fossils have been found all the way from Alaska to Mexico, meaning the earliest tribes in North America encountered these ferocious beasts. But just how ferocious was the American lion? Experts have estimated the North American lion to have been 25% larger than any modern lion. That would make it one of the biggest cats that ever roamed the Earth. It would have made life for Stone Age hunters in North America an absolute nightmare since it could have easily stolen their food. The American lion could have been nearly 9 feet long and 4 feet at the shoulder, and potentially 930 pounds. The only thing bigger and scarier than the American lion while it was alive was the giant short-faced bear. One thing we still don't know is why exactly it went extinct. It happened at the end of the Ice Age, just a few years before the last herds of woolly mammoths vanished forever. In all likelihood, there simply wasn't enough food for these massive predators to sustain themselves. Number 1. Campanile Giganteum There was once a snail so big, it's hard to believe. You might not think of a snail as being scary, but then again, you've never heard of the Campanile Giganteum. This is, or should I say was, the largest species of shelled gastropod in the history of the planet. Its shell was anywhere between 3 and 4 feet long. It was incredibly huge, with examples only being found in the Paris Basin of France. The Paris Basin was a unique ecosystem 56 to 33 million years ago, 
when the giant snail existed. Scientists believe the extreme growth rate of the snail was thanks to the environment of the basin. With a stable supply of oxygen and extremely warm sea temperatures, animals living in this diverse hotspot flourished. They grew extremely large and were very healthy. The giant gastropod likely grew every single year until it died. That means it never stopped growing, and in theory could have gotten even bigger than four feet. This wasn't like a snail you see in your aquarium. The C. gigantium was so big that if it were alive today and you wanted to keep it as a pet, you would need an outdoor swimming pool. Would you be scared of a snail bigger than most dogs? Let me know in the comments! Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe! See you next time! Bye!